I'm just saying that we're living in what we think is a four-dimensional world, where time is one of the dimensions, mm -hmm. but there are many, many possible structures in many, many dimensions which could give rise to time travel if you knew how to navigate around the symmetries. Uh-huh. See, see I, I, I... I get it now. It, Brian. I, 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 <laughs> see, well, it, first of all, it's certainly true to say that in, in Einstein's theory, we've got four-dimensional space, then, then you're prevented from travelling back in time, actually by the speed of light. It, fits into the geometry in that way. Mm. Um, you, you're right, though, you can imagine t wormholes and these ideas that you can tunnel through and take shortcuts. It'd be like going from London to Australia by going through the Earth rather than around the two-dimensional surface on the edge. So you... So but... Convenient. But... <laughs> uh, I've heard uh, Stephen Hawking has a, a thing called the chronology protection conjecture. Which, and the conjecture is, from a physics perspective, is that, as you say, it seems to make no sense. It's not a way to build a universe to allow you to be able to travel back in time and, and prevent your parents from meeting before you're born or whatever you do. So, so there's a conjecture that the laws of nature um, will always be such that time travel into the past is forbidden. Now, that's a conjecture at the moment. It's certainly it's true in what's called Einstein's special theory of relativity, and it might be true or not in his general theory. We're not sure because you can have these shortcut things. But most, I, I think most theoretical physicists would say, we think, we'll conjecture, as Stephen Hawking does, that the physics protects the past. Can I, can I just the say then that logic suggests that even if you can travel into the future, we'll never know. Or you can travel into the future, yes, but even in Einstein's theory, as far as you want. Yes, but, but you can... no one will actually do it because it would require a great scientific effort and a lot of no, money, we... but no one would ever be able to prove we, we do it. that they'd been in the future. It's been proved. So, so moving yes. clocks run Has slow. Has it been proved? Yes, moving clocks run <laughs> slow relative to stationary ones. So, so if you were to run across this uh, studio now and run back and sit down, and we measured the time on your watch very accurately, it would, you, your, your watch relative to mine would have run slower. And that's, that's, that's actually central to the way the satellite navigation system works. It requires to be... So, so that's true, and that's, a, that's part of Einstein's theory. But that you, was couldn't, written you couldn't or you wouldn't, let's say, the scientific community wouldn't do this, take a human being and try and put them into the future. I'd do because it. what would be the point of it? <laughs> well, you do, you do that, you just do. But if you, let's say you fly... I'll get, I know a number, which is the, the speed the protons go around the Large Hadron Collider. Mm -hmm. So they go around the Large Hadron Collider at 99.999999% the speed of light. At that speed, time passes 7,000 times more slowly for the protons than it does for the experimenters sat watching them going around, and that's relativity. So every time someone gets on a rocket and goes to the moon and comes back, their, their time will have passed slightly more slowly than the people on Earth. Therefore, they'll have gone into the future.